I'm an addict. You know, I yeah. used to be a gambling addict. I used to do, you know, drugs and stuff like that. But now I'm an addict to jujitsu. So I'm definitely, you know, obsessed. But now the obsession is pretty cool because it's, 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 it's jujitsu. No, 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 uh, I did a lot of, uh, you know, super stuff. I was actually in the gang life also a little bit. And, and, and uh, there was many people in that, in, in that world who l- loves violence. And, and they, you know, they love to hurt other people. I don't. I fucking hate violence. I, I train it to be so I can avoid it. In our gym, the level is, you know, super, super high and guys are really good. So I started by defending with the lapel. So I, actually my first introduction with lapels was I was in the uh, bottom side control and this huge guy was smashing me and I fit the lapel to my hand and I put the lapel against my knee. And I was like, oh shit, this releases the pressure. When you roll like I, that? I, 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 I break all the rules. I break all the rules when I roll. And especially I talk shit all the time. People hate it. Something, <laughs> something but I, I'm like, and when I do John Wayne's sweep, which is one of my favorites, first year when I did John Wayne's sweep, always when I was able to hit the John Wayne's sweep, I was whispering, John Wayne. It's what like, is it? Get out, flop it out. Some kind of fucking lizard, no. It's like a weird, like... <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be a bit of tribal. But, okay. But now it looks like a dolphin. Welcome to the Everyday Perspective podcast. Today we are on location at Colonel Resilience Hub in Cornwall. And today's guest is Chokes and More, Miko. Thank you guys for having me. Or actually, thank you for coming here. Uh, <laughs> pleasure, mate. What, what brings you to the UK? What are you, what are you doing in Cornwall, of all uh, places? I need to be honest, the weather. Left Spain, so yeah, Cornwall. Yeah, yeah, I came from Malaga. No, no, I, I came here to, uh, with, my, with my friend David and meet the people here in Colonel BJJ and just came to train and we're going to launch a new project. I cannot talk about it yet, but I'm going to talk about it in the near, near future. But uh, I came here to have a good, good time and training, training with the Colonel BJJ and meet, meet a lot of BJJ people. So I'm enjoying my time here and beautiful place, beautiful place. Yeah. I love it. And you, uh, you did a little bit of teaching. So we learned a few little, uh, few jokes earlier, which was, uh, was good. So we'll take that away. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few yeah. little nuggets. It was, nice to, <laughs> it, was, it was nice to train with you guys. Yeah. And actually I didn't come here to kind of uh, do seminars or, or teaching, but uh, I love teaching. I, and back in the home, I teach like uh, 20, 30 mm-hmm. hours a week. So for me, it's, and I love it. Yeah. I love teaching. So why not then? It was yeah. fun to train with you guys. So. I guess the guys love it as well, don't they? When they come into the class and whatever, you know, someone new teaching them. Yeah, when exactly. That, exactly. It's always like uh, yeah. inspiring because normally all the coaches have their, their way to do like warm-ups and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit different. And, and, but it, it, it was fun. It was fun. I, I love teaching and, and basically just spending the most of the, most time on the mat that I can. So I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, man, it's cool. We were just chatting, obviously, before we came online about, obviously, Danny. Um, you know, you were literally the, the first person he saw on social media. So a brand new white belt. <laughs> Starting to learn his lapel <laughs> jokes. Do you know what I mean? I was getting fucking sick about my white belt. <laughs> Straight a fucking way. Um, and, but, but interestingly, I, I, came, I, came a, I came across you fairly recently, actually. Okay. I mean, I didn't realise Danny had actually seen you as well. And, yeah. and then obviously saw you were coming over here. So so reached out to get in touch. But I mean, other than obviously those, those short videos, which is primarily what I've seen of you, you know, where you're hitting a little choke or demonstrating a technique and then you're sort of firing off some finger guns at the camera I don't know much about you and I think that might be the the sort of you know the case for a lot of people yeah so it'd be really interesting I guess to understand a little bit more about who Miko is the man behind Chokes and More all right so basically my whole name is Miko Hutton and I'm from Finland originally so I've been living now in Spain for I don't know 13 years about and I started my martial arts career when I was four years old. I started as a wrestling. I started wrestling when I was four years old. I had a little bit hard childhood. So my grandfather took me to the wrestling class and I wrestled maybe until I was like 15. Really? Uh, yeah. And then what, we moved. What style was it? Greco Roman and freestyle, freestyle wrestling. So that's why I like ankle peaks and. Oh, do you know what? I noticed that when you were rolling. Yeah. Constant, really low, money picking your ankles. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that's, that's my beginning. So my first actually real memories is from the from the wrestling mats yeah. like, like I, can, I remember the smell and those fucking cauliflower ear guys and uh, and that was my kind of uh, where i started my martial arts career and about when i was 15 we moved around a lot yeah we had a lot of problems in our house but uh, then i started to play football and i stopped martial arts and then i did a little bit of my thai a little bit and then i came back to martial arts when i was like a 31 and because before that you know i was i, I was also um, 
I was a criminal back in the day. I, I do a lot of stupid stuff. Uh, and when I left that world, basically, because that was also kind of, in that point, that was my identity, you know? So then when I left that world, I was like, what now? What now? And then I was like, uh, I need to do something. At first I was thinking about, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to make myself big. <laughs> and then I was like, that, that's pointless if I have a, like a beautiful car with a shitty engine, you know? <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, you know? And then I was like, okay, it needs to be more shorts. And should I go back to wrestling? And I was thinking about what I'm going to do. And then I found out the jujitsu. And I remember my first jujitsu training. Actually, we were in Spain. Uh, I, I lived in France for a while, actually, in Geneva, uh, close to... Geneva, this small oh, village yeah, called yeah. Massangi. I had, a, I had this, uh, my DJ friend, <laughs> DJ friend called Dandy Jack was living there. And I, I was living there and I was there, there kind of reinventing myself. And it was a kind of a raw time because I printed the, the paper like a, what I want to be in five years and stuff like that. Yeah. This kind of a yeah. self uh, kind of. Uh, what's a, it called? Like, st- like storyboarding your life. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah, imagining, yeah. For, for, imagining what, you, what yeah, you're going to do. Yeah. To, but I started to, uh, like that to do in, in France. France and, and then I came back to Spain and I remember when I because when I came back to Spain I was thinking about okay I'm gonna try jiu-jitsu and then when I, I went to see one apartment and the lady the real estate lady and he, she was Finnish you know and I started to talk with her like oh I, I want to try jiu-jitsu and the lady said oh my husband is a jiu-jitsu coach here I was like what <laughs> and we immediately she called her husband Marek like oh there's this guy who wants to try jiu-jitsu and I was like Okay, it must be a destiny or something like that. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that was my first jiu-jitsu coach, Marek Kostetsko. They are Demi and Maya's black belts. Yeah, uh, Marek Kostetsko and Jasse Junkari. And I remember my first lesson. Uh, uh, when I was going to the first jiu-jitsu lesson, I was there early with my bicycle. And I see all these guys went in. I said, oh, fuck, they look so <laughs> tough, man. What, what I'm, what I'm going to do? But I remember when I went there and, and I put my brand new kimono in and I went to the tatamis. Mm. And at that moment when I went there, I was to smell everything like I was I slapped the mats and I, I said it's good to be home and the guys were like what the fuck is this guy is right. but, it, but it felt like that it felt like I'm back home and since then I have been training and dedicating my life to jujitsu so so how did you um, so you obviously had your problems back in yeah. Finland and then decided to make a new life yeah and then how did you kind of fund that lifestyle then to, to move into jiu-jitsu from that point you know when you moved to Spain and then trying to try yeah because I, I, just, I, I just knew that I and because I was playing football also I, I was not good but semi good and that was also my identity and then I actually when I stopped football then I started to do the stupid stuff and that became my identity and I, I, I understand it that I need to have something and I need to have some kind of a you know, what I'm doing, you yeah. know, and I'm always being like athlete. So it was really important. And then I understand it because I love wrestling. So I was thinking about what I'm, maybe I start to do wrestling. And then I just found out I was Googling. Is uh, wrestling big in Finland? What? Is wrestling big in yeah. Finland? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're a small country, but we are excellent dri- drivers, rally drivers uh, and Formula One drivers and, and pretty badass wrestlers. And it's only like 5.5 million people. Uh, because we so there's a lot of wrestling schools and yeah, things like and that yeah not so much anymore but uh, back in the day it was it was pretty good and i don't know actually nowadays but the classical wrestling it's it's tough mm. it's tough uh, super super tough but yeah we just had grundy on didn't we yeah, telling us yeah. how his, his upbringing with wrestling and the russians and yeah all sorts of stuff but he was normal, like wrestling normal wrestling training for example <laughs> It's hard. Oh, it's Jiu-jitsu hard, training right? is hard, but because wrestling, you never stop. You are constantly like moving, moving, mm-hmm. moving, 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 moving. Yeah, yeah, it's different. It's it's very different. And I find if you roll with someone who's got a wrestling background, you can tell yeah. that they've got that. Yeah, it's that 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 initial bump to fucking just throw themselves in a little bit yeah. more. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mate, are you are you happy to talk about some of the stupid stuff that you mentioned that you yeah, got onto no, back home? Huh? Yeah. Actually, I was. Uh, let me think about what I what, what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, don't incriminate no, yourself. No, no, no. Uh, I did a lot of uh, you know stupid stuff. I was actually in the gang life also, a little bit, and 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 because for me, it was the way way to make money. You know, of course, there is this little part to be like, okay, I want to be a badass, so everybody is mm. respecting me that way. Yeah. But for me, it's, it was more like, I want to make money. You know, I don't want to be. You know, everybody knows who I am, and I, I just wanted to you know, operate a little bit on the shadows, even though I was so proud if I had like some gear on or gang gear, I was like, hey, hey, watch me. But for me, it was a way to make money. Uh, and, and I kind of, uh, some part, 
of of that life. I, I don't miss any part, but uh, there was many people in that in, in that world who l- loves violence, and and they you know they love to hurt other people. I don't. I fucking hate violence. I, I train it to be so I can avoid it. So it was uh, it was in that way. You know, I, I always despise, you know, hurting random people. And I have never done it. I have, you know, steal a lot of stuff. I have fucked up people. I have stolen money and do all kinds of stupid stuff. But I have never hurt anybody, like, just for fun. Yeah. And, that's, that's, and maybe that's, that's why yeah. that was not for me for a long time. Because I, I'm a too good guy for that. So I, I didn't enjoy it. For me, it was a way to make money. Uh, but, yeah, that I can tell also it was... A little bit of the gang, gang, gang side of. Yeah. And is, is there much of? Is there a lot of gangs in, in Finland? Those no. Or just, or, or just yeah, and Finland is a fairly small country, but we have our pretty rough under underworld also is there. It? So yeah, there is few few main main gangs and a lot of like sm- smaller ones. So yeah, and, and was there a particular moment that that made you kind of change direction? Because obviously you're involved with that sort of life, and, and that's becoming your identity, as you said. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because always. Even if everything is running smoothly, something bad is always going to happen. And somebody is always going to steal or something is going to happen. And eventually, other guys was able to kind of uh, turn us against, you know, us. And yeah, and it was like, and it's it's all about lie. That life, if you're criminal, everything is based on a lie. So basically, you're lying almost all the time, everything. So eventually, it started to fall apart. And because maybe that was my mistake because I had a slight moral, you know, back in then already. And because I remember one of the leaders of other gang told us like, uh, you, you should be like using a lot, lot more violence, like randomly, just create fear. And I was like, uh, why? And then, you know, I cannot say that because he was higher yeah, than yeah. me, so. But yeah, uh, even though thinking about it, it's, uh, and, and, and I, of course I regret it, but I, everything brought me here where I am now, you know, and without that maybe, I wouldn't be, and now I have been. And actually, the good thing was uh, when I moved to France, and I was thinking about now I'm starting to reinvent myself. What is the first what I'm going to do? I was like, what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do? And I made a decision. I stop lying. Okay, I stop lying, <laughs> and, and yeah. just I, I, and it was relieving. You know, I'm like, I stop lying. Of course, white lies. You know, you need to sometimes. Yeah. But but overall, I stop lying, and after that, everything kind of uh, started to slowly fall into you know, you know right spot and. Then I found out jujitsu, and actually when I started jujitsu, I made a decision that I don't want any girlfriends, anything, nothing like that. So I'm just gonna dedicate my life to training, and one day <laughs> I'm gonna spread the art. So I'm gonna do what I'm doing now. But I didn't know wh- how I'm gonna do it. But immediately when I step on the mat, I knew it that I want to do this for a living, and now I am, which is <laughs> yeah, pretty that's amazing. It's a fucking dream, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, that's and I'm still only a brown belt, so yeah. we will see. <laughs> yeah. So what age were you when you found jujitsu? I think I was 32. It wow, was okay. year 2012. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, like maybe December 2012 when I went to my first jiu-jitsu class and I, I fell in love immediately. Yeah. I must uh, fill you with a bit of confidence, mate. You were a similar age, weren't you? Yeah, when you that's it, yeah. Ah. Same age. Same okay. age when I started. Okay. So I'm 33 now. So yeah, yeah and you are also, you know, football player. Yeah. Music, so it yeah. helps when we have been doing you know, yeah, sports Yeah, it's, it's definitely helped me. Yeah, yeah, definitely helped me, I think. And I, and I, 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 I recognize that... Uh, because even though it was like uh, 15 years uh, already has passed by uh, from my wrestling career, but still when I went to the mats, it was kind of natural, all the movements. Like I was like, I felt like, okay, I know that I need to maybe go in this direction. You know, it, it helped a lot when I had the background and because that's why I don't even have cauliflowers mm. because I think my ears are so rubbery because I started to wrestling when I was four years old. <laughs> they are rubbery, aren't they? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like this, like blah, blah, blah. yeah this, this one doesn't even go past there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that bad. So I always get, my heads get stuck everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, good ears, mate. Well, yeah, so I, I think I was, yeah, I was, I was 32 and, oh man, this is a beautiful, beautiful art and, and I have not looked back since, since then. And actually first, let's say seven years of training, I did normal jobs. I was working in the office mm. and doing like a just normal normal office job, normal boring office job. And then one day I decided I'm, I'm gonna take a leap and, and I just quit my job and, and I started to do privates and stuff like that. And I was teaching first pr- privates when I was a blue belt. Mm. No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I charged whopping 20 bucks an hour 
but for me, I always like, I'm not going to try to teach something that I don't know. So I, I was not the guy like, you know, I only, I was teaching what I know. So, so the was, you, was you always into doing like um, your chokes, basically, those little little fancy chokes and stuff no, like that? No, was no, that I'm involved as you've moved yeah, on? It, it evolved. It evolved. So when I was a little bit, I was only teaching like scissor sweeps, basic moves, stuff like that. But I do them pretty nicely already then because I, I, I like to, you know, break the techniques to the pieces. Mm -hmm. So I was teaching like really, really basic stuff. And then it started to grow. And, and then I made my first Instagram post. 2019 it's four years ago mm. and then the then it started to get really big yeah <laughs> yeah awesome um I, I think like we talk about this with a fair bit about sort of guys or and girls that are a little bit older mm. being really apprehensive to get into jiu-jitsu obviously you just touched on like coming from sport helps a little bit but is there any other advice or, or guidance that you would give to, to guys and girls that are maybe in their sort of 30s that are considering it, but are maybe a bit apprehensive or a bit nervous about taking that first step into a gym, what would you say? Uh, maybe uh, do the first class as soon as possible. Like, like let's just, uh, just try it. Many times, because when I was a white belt and blue belt, I was always trying to recruit everybody to try to teach. <laughs> and I said, like, try it. If you like it, nice. If you don't, it's also, it's also okay. And also, when you start at a little bit older age, you need to take care of your body. And also remember, it's a personal journey. You don't need to do like other people are doing, like be super competitive if you don't like it. Just, just keep doing it in your way, you know. Yeah, yeah I think. And take good care of your body. So basically, in an ideal situation, would be like this: if you train one hour a day, you would do one hour some kind of uh, for your body for stretching and stuff like that. Of course, it's not many times it's not realistic, but try to. You know, think about it like that. So if you train every day, do a little bit stretching and stuff like that, because in the long term, mm. it will help you. This is really amazing sport, but uh, it's super rough for your body. I have, you know, <laughs> I can give a lecture 15 minutes uh, uh, of my injuries. So. I've seen your ribs today, mate. They yeah. Look fucking good. <laughs> there it is. Ribs and shoulders and knees and four times ACL, MCL, ACL, MCL, both knees one time. So You have? Yeah, 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 but uh, no, no, no need for surgery, but just like uh, from heel hooks and stuff like that. So yeah. you said that, didn't you? They, they love it at your gym, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're super good in our gym, man. But they, the heel hooks, they are. That's the thing what the nogi were now doing. So it's great technique, but it's it, it's sometimes pretty hard to train because there is no pain signal before you break it. So. Of course, you can train it, but you need to be extra yeah. careful. Yeah, yeah you know? there's no pain and there's, there's there's no movement through the submission either, is yeah. there? So with an arm bar, you know, it's like... Yeah, 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 and, and you kind of feel it. Yeah, okay. and that's why when I do, if I train with the guys who do a lot of, like, uh, for example, heel hooks and stuff like that, so I, I, I try to, you know, play against the position. So if I end the position and I feel like, okay, it's there, so I don't start to, you know, front rolling and do all kinds of funky stuff. If, if I end up in a position, I tap myself. So I try to prevent ending up in the position yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Rather, yeah, rather yeah 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 because yeah, then trying to get out of that yeah like, exactly yeah. Right. because i think most of my injuries come there okay it's there but if i try to escape or do something if i end up in a, it's almost there tap out and, and start again so i try to defend the position maybe more than the yeah. submission makes yeah sense. no that does make sense and it, it's an interesting point actually because i think the other thing that people find and this isn't like an age-related thing mm. but i think it might be worse for somebody a bit older coming in who've got a bit of life behind them but it's obviously managing the ego. Um, uh, and, and guys come in, and again, guys and girls, but, you know, of all ages, but mm. I don't know, I feel like, and you, you've handled it really well, of course, but I feel like a lot of blokes coming in, maybe, you know, in their 30s, getting wrapped up by a 17-year-old. But how, the, did you, how did you find that? Uh, Jiu-jitsu is amazing art because if you cannot handle that, you cannot do this art because there's no, there's no other way than come there and some... 15 year old blue belt is going to manhandle you. He <laughs> might be even a lady. So you just need to go those steps. Uh, and it's also great character builder. You know, mm. Nobody's good at jujitsu when, when they first started. So I, I think it's really important to understand. And, and there is two, two different ways. When you try jujitsu, you even fall in love. Okay, I want to learn this or ah, fuck this shit. I don't, because it's yeah. too hard. So, uh, um, but that's why, for example, in, in jujitsu, there is not so many assholes. Most of the guys are yeah. pretty smooth. I think, I think as you know what other people are capable of. Yeah, and, and, of, and it's super know? humbling because there's always always somebody who is going to make it up. And, and <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking yeah. what it is. I remember I was one time I was I was fighting with my coach Sandra Lilius and 
<laughs> it's fucking amazing fighter. And I was able to ankle pick him. And I was so excited. <laughs> I got the ankle pick and I get him down. And I was like, fuck. And maybe half a split second, he on me immediately. I was like, Miku. <laughs> don't celebrate early, but I was so excited. All the other ankle pick, yeah, boom, I tap. <laughs> No, you say that though. I'm kind of like that with him. I'll get him near something yeah. and he'll fucking get out. And I'm like, for fuck's yeah. sake, like one day. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a couple of times I'm like, fucking nearly, nearly. It's, it's one of these things I think with good mates, like with most people like you are as well. And, and like we were today, I'm quite happy to tap and, yeah. just, and just put myself in, di- in different positions. But with him, you don't give me a fucking no, if you yeah, let yeah, him yeah, tap yeah, me. Yeah. If he's ever going to tap me, he's going to earn yeah, it. He's, getting close. Mates, eh? he's yeah. getting close though. So oh, he'll, he'll, yeah. he'll get it. Yeah, and that's how I like to train like really. I love also hard rounds, mm. but I'm really playful. Mm. You know, yeah. I, I, I give out positions and I do front rows and back rows when you shouldn't be doing it. And I, I kind of try to keep it really playful. So for me, yeah, it's, well, I'm pretty much the same. Yeah. Like we, we're at flow. We do that quite a lot, don't we? Like yeah. we said, we have yeah, flow yeah, yeah, rolling yeah, 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 yeah. and we move. Mm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when me and you are rolling, we're just yeah, yeah, it, rolling, it, it, playing, exactly, getting exactly. in a position, moving. Exactly, exactly. You know? I, I love to train like that. And for me, it's like never like competitive on the training. If I, only if I decide like yeah. normally... I teach maybe one or two classes a day, one private, maybe one or two privates, and I try to train also one training by myself. And I do maybe in a normal training one like hard round. Mm-hmm. And then I just like try to, because when you do it a lot, mm-hmm. you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna burn yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, I don't know, I, I love the flow rolling also. Bam, 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 going in and flow and literally get into the, you know, the mental space, like where you just flow, go around. And I, I think you learn a lot. By yeah. doing that, because the movement, 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 yeah. pump, 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 switching positions and enjoy, enjoying the yeah. the flow, like we did, for example, today. It, it was it was super nice, and there is a lot of guys who still cannot do it. Even even the higher high belts, I have seen guys who are purple and up there, and they are still even with the flow roll. They're like, Rrr. yeah, I just think I've been really lucky. <laughs> I yeah. genuinely say that all the time, but I've just had good people around me since I started. Yeah, and, and so it's just it's just accelerated that side of stuff. Yeah, and if you have been training under a year. Amazing. Yeah. It's really yeah, impressive, yeah. man. Because normally it, it takes years to kind of feel that calmness. And because that's the, in my mind, that's the like first step when you're going to start to get good at jujitsu. You find this calmness on the match. Like, bam, bam. Whatever happens, you kind of, ding, 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 ding. For me, it was like almost three or four years before I found it. And you are under, under a year in the art. Well, just a year. Look, like, yeah. a year last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to be really good, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something our, our academy back home really promotes. I mean, the, 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 the center is called Flow Martial Arts. <laughs> so the clues in the title. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a really big ethos of, of the gym. But I think, like you say, because you, you put in the mat hours mm. yeah. and the, the guys that you train with, uh, yeah, sort like of purple, you, Steve, brown. Kenny, <laughs> like everyone's constantly, like especially when I first started, because I was quite strong. Yeah. You know, a couple, of, a couple of the higher bouts put it on me a little bit, not in a bad way, but just a not yeah like calm you down and then when you realize i oh, once you do relax you do get better i remember my my biggest thing why i got addicted was with jordan i've said it a couple of times but jordan's like a 70 kilo 65 kilo i don't know what she is but a, a girl and me being i was probably like 17 and a half stone at the time i was like oh, i'd be fine and she just fucked me up for like <laughs> five minutes straight arm bar after arm bar yeah. didn't put any weight on me and it just fucking blew my mind and i remember being like fuck i've got like this is yeah, fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've got to learn this. And then went speaking to her and she was just like, just flow, just chill and just yeah, move yeah. and just, and I couldn't stop her doing what she was doing, yeah, but yeah. she really at no time put any sort of pressure on me oh. that I could grab her, flip her, do anything. She just, yeah. And, and that pressing. was it. That was like the, and then exactly, that was it. That was like, that's oh it. fuck. You either fall in love or the, then you're like, fuck this. I'm out of here. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's great character building, and I think Eddie Bravo tells sometimes that Jiu Jitsu is the ultimate douchebag filter. So, <laughs> no, no, I can say like ultimate. There is also you know as well in Jiu Jitsu world, but not so much. I have met maybe like three or four like people who are you know who I don't like, but overall, mm. Jiu Jitsu people are so smooth. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. It's different backgrounds as well, isn't it? Yeah, but it's because it's aggressive hugging, and we are so close. So basically, we are in uncomfortable zone all the time, and there is even. Uh, do you know this like a uh, uh, it's like a depression kind of uh, if you're depressed there is this hugging therapy <laughs> <laughs> we do that voluntarily like many hours a day so we are hugging other sweaty men so yeah that's why maybe we are so calm yeah, as you more. said about something like that before and it sounded super gay and then we, we cut it out of the podcast <laughs> yeah I, I did i didn't want it quite so well mate but, but. <laughs> well i can't remember what you said exactly but when we watched it back it was super oh, i started talking about it. oxytocin and biochemicals yeah. and it just sounded a bit a bit iffy but but, but, I, but I agree. But it was the same point, wasn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I wanted to ask you about when you were a white belt, yep. or white belt actually, because you you said you, you said it, you said it took about four years for you to achieve that state of flowing yeah. on the mat. So, so what were the early days like for jiu-jitsu for you? So oh, oh, tough, 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 tough. Uh, I started in in this place called Gaijin Academia de Jiu-Jitsu in Fuerteventura in Spain, and my coaches were there now. Demi and Myers black belts. Back in the day, they were like purple and brown belts, but really traditional old school training. So like super hard rounds, oh, really? no, yeah, and <laughs> we have like cockroaches on the on the floor, and there was no warm water for first four years. So just no only way. like yeah, and super super small gym, and mm. it was. But I I loved it, and that that's why I have really solid basics because we were training like basic basic basics. basics. And, yeah. and back in the day, if you're tired, can I have sit sit a round out? <laughs> not gonna happen. Not gonna, <laughs> no, 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 not gonna happen. But yeah, that was uh, that was my first first academy. It was really small, maybe let's say forty square meters. It was like old garage. So when you open the doors, it was straight on the street, and we painted like a Brazilian the 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 statue, oh, the Brazilian statue <laughs> on the wall, and it was like yeah, close for Dima. Yeah, it feels like a, it felt like we were in nineteen ninety two, even though it was two thousand twelve. But super super old school, tough training, but I love it. I love it because that gave me the solid basics, what I'm still teaching and, and training. I, I, I love the basics. Yeah, you find that, that style of training because obviously it feels like things have moved on a little bit. Yeah. So it, it does give you a level of toughness and some basics. But obviously a lot of gyms these days just don't teach that way. No, well. and, and, and you cannot do it anymore. Mm. Like it's so hard. Because if you push people too hard, they, they quit nowadays. No snowflakes, mate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind, of way, kind, okay. of way, kind of way, kind of way. But it's, 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 it's like super tough. If you push now too much, like if the train would be the same now, what it was like 10 years ago, maybe the sport wouldn't be evolving so fast. Mm. We, you know, we can be still like training hard, but it's, it needs to be a little bit more because... There was no like feelings back in the day. There was like you just push it through <laughs> and, and let's do the shock. Then you come in and, and it's sort of bleeding and everything. Who cares? And we're throwing each other and it was like a pretty rough. But nowadays it needs to be a little bit more controlled. Yeah, it was something that our, uh, our our coach or professor talked about. We had him on an earlier podcast and he yeah. was saying that back when he started, everybody that got involved with jujitsu yeah. were mostly fighters or or martial artists from other disciplines. Yes. Yeah. So they, they kind of were accepting of that style of training and they, they kind of appreciated it. Whereas I think, as you say, I think a lot of people these days are, are hobbyists and, yeah. you know, maybe... I think jiu-jitsu I mean, appeals to a lot of people because of the, the no striking aspect. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, where you can get a doctor or, you know, someone <laughs> clever or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. that can come in, they can learn how to fight, they can grapple, they can do all that, but they're not going to get their head kicked in no. you know, physically. That's you know it. what I mean? And, that's and, and you can spar, you know, regularly. And, and that's the that's the big difference, uh, you know, comparing to the other martial arts because we can spar 100 mm. percent, fair and safe. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it so special, because there is no like, even though I love all martial arts, but let's say for example in my thigh, when you spar, you cannot go 100 percent all the time. So there is always this tension, you know. If I would go hard, I would I would fuck you up, okay. But in jujitsu, yeah. no way. Let's just just roll and I tap or you tap. Mm. So it, it's it kind of releases the steam much easier. So. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I yeah, agree. Yeah. And, and, and uh, again, I love all the martial arts, but stand-up guys, they are most of the time a little bit edgier than jiu-jitsu guys. Yeah, we, we, we've talked about this so many times, actually, because this is a running theme. Even if we're not covering martial arts, yeah. it always comes up because obviously we're so passionate about it. But we always talk about striking sports. You know, they're, they're far more attribute-based and you've always got like a puncher's chance. Yeah. Whereas with jiu-jitsu, once it gets to a certain level of technicality, attributes to a to a degree mm. are kind of nullified aren't they and you know that's just to your point where you know you, it's then skill and, and training versus skill and training opposed to just attributes um yeah. Mm. so yeah absolutely love it so were you so you were at that gym and then how did you end up in spain by the way i'm not sure if we asked you already. Uh, actually i end up in spain it's a interesting story also because i have a daughter mila uh, and, and, and Mila my, and my ex-girlfriend, mother of my, my daughter, she was moving uh, in Fuengira to do this sports massage school right. because there's like a fin- Finnish, fin- Finnish language sports massage school in, in Fuengira, La Malaga. Right, okay. Uh, and then I moved because she moved here and I wanted to stay close to my daughter and I had a little bit of savings back in the day. So first two years I was only spending time with my daughter. So every morning we were like hopping the train and Let's go somewhere and create these kind of <laughs> funny hats from tin foil and do some crazy, crazy stuff. But uh, that was the first reason. And then when the school stopped, 
and they moved back to Finland. Of course, I was feeling like devastated, like, okay, I love my daughter, but what I'm, what I'm going to do if I move back to Finland? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the life. And then I already found out jujitsu and because I, so then I started to, you know, chase my dream and chase my career. And I, I, I stayed, stayed in the Spain and luckily mm-hmm. now. What's the lifestyle like out there? Where? In Spain. I What's like lifestyle? It's super relaxed and easy, easy going. And of course, it's also nerve wracking because I'm from Finland and I've been in the military. So, you know, common sense and everything like pom, 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 pom. Yeah. But in Spain, I'll give you an example. First, first apartment, what I had in Spain, the light switch, when you go to the bathroom, you open the door to the bathroom and you go behind the door and there's the <laughs> light switch to the bathroom. And it's so, it's Spanish style. And I was like, Makes no sense. But here in Spain, it's... But again, you need to have this kind of a golden middle way. So you cannot be too strict or too relaxed. But uh, the lifestyle is pretty, pretty relaxed and easy, easy, easy going. But I, I love it. I learned to love it and, and the weather. Because I'm a positive guy. But if I'm surrounded by negativity, I cannot be who I am if I'm, for example, in Finland all the time. Yeah. Because I don't get any response. Like if I'm goofy now and I make jokes and I say hello to everybody... Nobody responds to me, and then I'm, fuck it, let it be. But in Spain, if you say random people walk by, hola, que tal, what's up? Hey, hola, que tal? <laughs> Everybody's like, hey, I know you, we have no idea who you are. Mm. So it's, it's the lifestyle that kind of uh, embraces you to be positive. And it's a huge impact, like uh, 330 days a year, when you wake up, when you go from your house out, shiny, shiny. Yeah, I bet then, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. it's, poof. I, I love the weather. That. I say it all the time. I'm like, if I had the money, I'd be gone. Do you know what I mean? If I had some, I don't know, reason, yeah, I'd be gone. Because I love that sunshine. Yeah. It's just better, isn't it? It's yeah, better, just to find a way to be like a digital nomad. Some kind of what you can do. From, from, and there's pretty much, it's, it's semi-cheap. So let's say like, uh, now the rents have gone up, but let's say if you can make like uh, 1,500 euro, for example, you can, you can stay alive. But because... You don't need much because if you have a jujitsu, mm. I was I was getting long like first seven eight years I had like maybe seven hundred bucks a month, but I, I, no yeah. worries I was able to train. That yeah. was the most important thing because I knew that every training is taking me closer to my dream, and I didn't even know what the dream was, but it was something related to jujitsu. But I never was dreaming to be a competitor. I was like something I want to share my you know passion. I want to yeah. teach or inspire and. Uh, actually, and now I'm doing just that. <laughs> yeah, that's good, so, it? Steve yeah. talked about that, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Steve said that when he gets on the mats, and every time he's on the mats, it's getting him further away from that bad position that he was in to yeah. get to where he wants to be. Yeah. And you've just said yeah, exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And it's like the overall, like the idea, like every training makes you a little bit better. So I love to tell that every training makes you one percent better. Of course, it's it's not like all like that, but but I love the idea because every every training matters. And eventually in jiu-jitsu, what makes you better is the time on the mat. Yeah. The more you spend time on the mats. Mm. Well, yeah, you learn, you, you learn little things yeah. you, every time. Like uh, It's even like tweaking a technique that you might know. Mm. Like, you know, I, I might have done something with you and then you say, oh, I put your leg there. I yeah. put that there. And you're like, oh yeah, fucking hell. Like you said with the white belt, the yeah, white yeah. belt story. You know, yeah, where yeah, you yeah, said yeah, put, yeah. Your, yeah, exactly, put your, exactly. your exactly. leg there, Actually, I was, there. Teaching, I was teaching you guys today the, the K-man necktie. Uh, and the white belt, uh, Topias, actually, uh, we were doing open mat and I was doing the technique and I was doing differently. And the white belt asked me, what if you put the foot on the hip? And I was like, let's try it. And it worked. And the guy was been training like three months. <laughs> and I, I actually, I added that technique to my BTC fanatics instruction. I know it yeah. from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like a boom, open, yeah. open, open mind. But you can learn, you can learn from a, yeah, anyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, white belt yeah. mentality. We are just a white belt who never fucking quit. Mm. So, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. You mentioned that you were in the military. Can I can I ask about that? Was was that uh, did they have national service in? Finland? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. This, this is obligatory in Finland, so you yeah. need to go. Is it? Yeah, everybody who is uh, eighteen, you need to go. Of course, you can go like it's, I don't know what it's called, like civil service. Then you're gonna go somewhere cleaning or whatever. But for me, it was uh, I kind of liked. I was, was even it two years? No, no, no. Six months to uh, for a maximum one year. I was six months because at that point, my dream was to be a professional football player. Mm-hmm. That was my dream. But I was pretty good at it. So, mm-hmm. and, and I loved it. I, I was in the Karelian Brigade just on the border 
So basically, if Russia decides to attack Finland, <laughs> I'm <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I need to go there immediately. Or maybe I'm too old already, so they don't yeah. know. But now I know jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> don't think it works against yeah, tanks, yeah, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> People will argue, yeah, yeah, but I don't think it does. Just trying to do a neck on a guard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it was just a brief, brief. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Six, yeah. six months. So we have like a basic training and and f- a few months of, few months of real stuff. But I, I was in an interesting position. So basically, actually, I don't know if I can tell this, but, but I, I was introduced a lot of different guns because, for example, I know all the guns what Russians are using. So we need to learn to use them. If we end up behind lines and you know yeah. we end up with our guns, so I need to know how to use the Russian guns. But I, I, I loved it. Because th- that was the first place in my life when everybody started in the same line. And I was like, okay, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or whatever. So everybody starts to run from here. And if you, if you dedicate to yourself and if you try to be good, then you can yeah. you know, climb up the ladder. So I, I kind of liked it. Mm. Even though it's, uh, there's always a rush to wait stuff. So <laughs> huge rush to go somewhere and then we're waiting. So <laughs> but I, yeah. I kind of enjoyed it. And, and I went there as a volunteer because you need to go there when you're 18. And I went there when I was like 17. Wow. And they said first to me, like, okay, there's a nice place in like 30 kilometers from here. I said, no, 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 no. I want to go to the place, the hard, hard place. So I was traveling every Friday, like eight hours to get there. Wow. And Sunday when I had a, like, when we had a, sorry, like, a, like eight hours there, and eight hours back. So if I have like two days off, 16 hours traveling, so it didn't make any sense. But that was, for me, it was important that I, I go to a place which is really hard. And I felt that I, I, was, I was doing something important, you know. And my grandfather was, was also a veteran, veteran, so. Well, why was that important? Because I, I want to be ready, because if I need to defend my country, you know. Mm-hmm. Russians were attacking Finland a few times back in the day. So, so I'm, I'm always ready. If I need, I, I'm, I'm ready to die for Finland. So for me, it was... Uh, Really important. We are a small, small country, and we still speak Finnish because there was there was this man who are ready to you know stand on the border and say you are not going to come here. So it's it's important to. I think we forget that a little bit in England, don't we? Yeah. We're like just even though we're in Europe, we're we're an island, don't we? Mm. A little bit away from yeah. all that sort of tension. You yeah. Know what I mean, that we're we're just enough away, and we were we we kind of relax on that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and then you we, know haven't I mean? had, we haven't had national service for years, and I and I think it's um yeah. I mean, I didn't do it and I'm not complaining about that, but I don't know, I, I see the attitude of some people mm. um, and maybe it would, uh, would change their attitude if they did a little bit of national service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so you're in Spain, you're a white belt. Did you compete much? I have been competing in jiu-jitsu only maybe three times. Okay. Yeah, first time it was when I had been training two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what did we that drive teach like, you? Well, <laughs> we <laughs> drive like six hours in, 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 in other, other part of Spain and we went there and I was able to first... Past the guy's guard, and I'm like, wow, 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 wow. But I ended up losing on an arm bar. But it was a great experience. And because after that, normal training fees, you know, much easier. Yeah. And I encourage everybody to do the first competition as soon as possible. If you want to compete more, do it. But do the first competition as soon as possible, because then you know how it's about. <laughs> and if you want to do it or not. But it would be hard, for example, if you train like many, many years and you have never competed. Then, you, then, it's a, then it starts to build up. and like, oh, shit, now I, you know. Just try it if you like it, not. But it's it's still different when somebody really wants to, you know, go hard. They go 100%. So I think everybody should be trying it. Everybody can be competitors, mm. but at least try it. So Yeah. And when were the other times that you competed? Uh, uh, then it was like a little bit before Corona. I had one competition, won one, lost one. I think I won by triangle. I, I don't remember, but won one, lost one. And then I had a, this uh, competition where actually it was on the beach. And I have a funny story about that. Again, I won the first match, but the second match, I, I, I thought I was winning because I didn't have no idea about the points. But then I actually I was losing. <laughs> but then I was on top of the guy and I had a Kimura grip. And I was like, yeah, man. And I, so I remember I watched the clock and it was two minutes. But I didn't get the Kimura. And I was so angry for myself. And, because, and then when the match stopped, I was like, I got it. And then the other guys, and I saw the points or something. What? And then I decided I'm gonna make a Kimura my one of my best weapons. And then I started to drill the Kimura, and now I can. Now I know. Get it from everywhere. If, yeah, if I have Kimura grip on the top of you two minutes, <laughs> I'm gonna finish it. <laughs> but it's, and I kind of want to also compete still because now, 
when I have a lot of followers and many people know me, I want to just show that I put myself on the platform because I really don't care if I win or lose. Of course, I want to win when I compete, but I want to show everybody that I can put myself there. But now I have so much injuries and all kinds of stuff happening. So if I'm healthy and when the time is right, I'm definitely going to compete. So it's, it's going to be good kind of inspire people that just go there and whatever happens, happens, you know. And it's a different different uh, uh, kind of feeling when you compete, mm. I guess, even if you're hard rolling. But competition, you know, all the anxiety. But I have been competing so a lot because when I was younger, when I did the wrestling, I did maybe like uh, hundreds of competitions. I have like in my house, like uh, we get these spoons. Uh, was a re- re- reward. There was no like medals. There were sp- spoons, <laughs> small spoons, yeah. So I have like a full box of spoons. So I have been, I think the first competition was when I was five years old in the, in the wrestling. And then I was competing like almost every week and pump, 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 pump. So I didn't have that kind of an eager yeah. to compete. I think it was because of that, because I was competing all, all my childhood in the wrestling. So I didn't have this kind of a, I need to go there and prove myself. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's because of that. I don't know. But I, I was still definitely going to do it. In the future, when I'm healthy and when the time is right, I'm gonna put myself out there and let's see, let's see, maybe some label choke. So then somebody's gonna choke me. Who cares? I just tap, I just tap and <laughs> tap and move on. Yeah, isn't it? Tap and move on. Eh? So, no problem. <laughs> so this is this is a little bit of a uh, sort of debate area, I think, yeah. in jujitsu, right? So obviously, you've got the age brackets in in competition. Mm-hmm. So obviously adult division, that's pretty much sort of 18 right through to 30. Um, and then you've got your masters, one, two, and, and so on. Um, and then obviously we're sort of slightly older gents. Um, so, you know, our age bracket will put us into a master's mm. category. Seniors. Seniors. <laughs> Seniors, no? Seniors, yeah, Seniors category. Um, and, and, and part of the reason for that, the argument states, is, is that people, when they're in that age, typically have sort of family commitments and can't yeah. train that often. Where, where, do you th- where, where do you stand with that? If you were to compete, would it be masters? Would it be adults? And, and you know, do you think it makes a difference? Do you think it matters? Have you got any, uh, any thoughts on that? Well, well what, do you, what do you mean by that? Like, like, because of course in jiu-jitsu, we can always find in the master category. So for example, I'm, I'm 43. I wouldn't go in an adult division. I would like to fight against all dudes also because that's more realistic. And for example, let's say, I'm a, I'm a brown belt. I have, I'm, I'm pretty good at jiu-jitsu. But a really good blue belt will probably fuck me up. Young, young lad who has been training like a few years, but like super high level blue belts, they will probably beat me like world class blue belts. So for me, but I, I think this, it's a genius way in jiu-jitsu that you can compete. Same belt, same weight, about same age. I think it's... A, yeah, I really like it. I always think that for me it encourages me to train more because if i if i do end up doing all right and then you know i'm 35 say and i'm a i don't know fucking blue belt purple belt whatever yeah you can go into that category like you said against other 35 year olds whether i'm training more or less than a hobbyist or whatever at the time i think it's just i don't know it's neither here nor there really you know yeah but but also would be a great experience Maybe when I one day when I'm going to get my black belt, maybe I'm going to sign up in the adult division. Just <laughs> if we're going to meet some world superstar, and he's, of course he's going to beat my ass. But just an experience. Just yeah, a, just, just a feel. to feel, yeah, feel yeah, what yeah. it's like. Yeah, <laughs> Gordon Ryan fucking twisting you up. <laughs> <laughs> feel like rip. Fuck. <laughs> Any chance that there would be no heel hooks today? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, fair enough. Just wanted to, to ask, because I know it's a, a sort of debated area, isn't it? Um, so tell us about sort of your journey then from sort of white belt to blue belt and sort of through up to where you are now. All right, so, so I was a pretty long white belt. So I was white belt like three and a half years, even though I was training a lot, because <laughs> actually when I was white belt and one of my friends was promoted before me and this guy was training like only like six months and they, they, my professors promoted him. And I, I was like, asked them, like, why did you promote this guy? Because I can beat this guy. And he's like, you never ask for the belts. It's just moved one year. And it was like that. There's one year more. It was like that. So I was three and a half years white belt. <laughs> so, he, so he gave you a year sentence because yeah. you asked for the yeah. belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's something Kenny would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but anyway, like three and a half years. And then I was a blue belt also, like a let's say three years, a little bit more, three and a half years also. And actually, I, I went to my current gym, Lilius Barat, martial arts, when I was a two-stripe blue belt. 
and, and and now I've been there like uh, I don't know six seven six seven years, and I got my purple belt, and then I got my brown belt actually a little bit more than two years two years ago, and I think I started to do this AK professionally. Let's say when I was when I started to do the videos, uh, and then I started to teach like the privates and, and of course they, I needed to do still normal jobs a little bit so I could survive because 20 bucks in a one private and if it's one a day, 20 bucks a day, it doesn't yeah. count, count it still. But uh, let's say last four years I have been pretty okay with it. So, but yeah, three, three and a half years white belt, three and a half years blue belt. Then I was exactly, almost exactly two years purple belt. Then I got my brown and I have been a little bit more two, than two years as a brown belt. So. Next one is going to be the last, so... Yeah, that's where the journey begins though, right? Yeah, but I, was, I have been always, already thinking about it, like um, what I'm going to do when I get my black belt and I'm going to start the cycle again. I'm going to start to do the, learn the same techniques, scissor sweeps, and I'm just going to, I'm going to start the cycle again. Mm. So I, Yeah, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't change anything, but uh, when it comes to the belts, because many people are, oh, we don't do this for belts. Of course we don't do this for belts. But the thing is that you get new belt in jiu-jitsu only four times in your whole life. So in that moment, kind of stop. The, a lot of hard work kind of crystallizes in those moments. So why don't, don't just enjoy it for a while and think about it. Okay, it takes a lot of sacrifice, a lot of training to get there at that point. So yeah, I'm excited. Black belt is going to be a next. So <laughs> let's see. <laughs> it's, a, it's a truly a journey, but I'm... I'm going to be emotional when I get it. I'm going to probably cry and take a long speech. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> enjoy it. But it, you know, I'm happy to be here and, and enjoy the journey. And, and I know you have been training longer than me. I know. But... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but like you say it's mat time right exactly so exactly. although in calendar years I started before you did yeah. I mean you've probably put in more hours yeah. I mean, if you, you teach what 20-30 hours a week you said yeah. so that alone for me is that's probably five years <laughs> <laughs> but definitely a couple of months worth of training for me yeah yeah, yeah. you do in a week so and we, again we've talked about this loads especially with, with our, our coach professor back home mm. I trained with him like when he was a blue belt. Yeah. So I started when he's a blue belt. He's a third degree black belt now. Oh. Um, and we, we joked before that there was a period where I would always compare my ability. Mm. I would base my ability on how I did against him in sparring. And I just progressively did again, progressively did worse against him in sparring. And I couldn't work out why for ages. Mm. Obviously a bit dumb, but I was, I was working full time. Mm. So I would train in the evening, sometimes exhausted, half asleep. I wasn't frequent. I'd, I'd come for that hour, hour and a half. And then I'd, my mind was back to, to, you know, whatever else. Whereas he was training all the time. Mm. And it's like you said, where you have that extended period on the mats as well. So you get that kind of ability to analyze. Mm. So it's not just m the movement and mm. the techniques, but it's also then that, that kind of mindful, the, the, the thinking about it. Yeah. So you reflect and you think, oh, maybe this would work. And then you go back to it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you've got that luxury if you're on the mats for extended periods. Yeah. Whereas I think when people jump in and out, like I've done, yeah. the learning's just slow, it is what it is. Yeah, man, and it's, it's a personal journey, like we talked about earlier, it's, it's a personal journey. But the most important thing is that we, we just can't quit. We just can't quit, we just keep going on and, and you know. Did you become obsessive with it? With, uh, with regards to like Paul just saying that when he would go in, he would do jiu-jitsu, leave and forget about it. Yeah. Whereas I'm, I'm a fucking nightmare. I'm watching videos. I'm yeah. doing all sorts of Actually, stuff. Great, trying to like study it. Great do do question that? because I'm an addict. You know, I yeah. used to be a gambling addict. I used to do, you know, drugs and stuff like that. But now I'm an addict to jiu-jitsu. So I'm definitely, you know, obsessed. Yeah. But then now the obsession is pretty cool because it's, 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 it's jiu-jitsu. So... And I, I also watch a lot of videos and I analyze and I, I write down and I have my own like blueprint system what I'm teaching. Like the, the base idea is like uh, you have uh, same and main positions and you need to have like uh, something from every position. So for example, let's say turtle position. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you two ways if you're in top position, what we can do. We can, I'm going to teach you one way how you can take it back and for example, one attack. And if you're on the bottom, one escape or actually there is only escaping from the bottom turtle. So two always from top and bottom position. And if you're, for example, half guard, top position, yeah. one pass, maybe one attack, and from the bottom, one sweep, one attack. So that's the building blocks of the, of the base game. So I think you should have those before you get your blue belt. Like, like at a white belt level, then you have like every, every position. So for example, if I put you, whatever the position is, at least you have something what you can try. If it works, nice. If it doesn't, at least you have something to try. You are not like, okay, I don't have any, 
what am I <laughs> yeah, going to do here? Clear, yeah. Yeah. And that gives you the confidence to, you know, roll and win or lose. But you know, okay, I'm going to try this my move. It works nice. If it doesn't, at least I, I, I know the directions kind of way. Mm, yeah, I think it's a good approach. Um, I think I, I've seen it over the years where, you know, you've had some guys come in and they, they've had good attributes, they've been really flexible or something. And they've maybe just really focused. There was a guy years ago who was really good at Baron Bolos. Mm. Had a really good inverted game. Super flexible guy, like really powerful in that position. But he passed his guard and he was like a wet fish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah, but he, but he got through a few belts yeah. on that. But looking back, maybe that wasn't the right decision at the time. Yeah, and if, if you kind of, uh, for me, for example, because I, I play a lot of with the lapels, <coughs> with the kimono usually. And it started like this because in our gym, the level is, you know, super, super high and guys are really good. So I started by defending with the lapel. So I, actually, my first introduction with lapels was I was in the uh, bottom side control and this huge guy was smashing me and I fit the lapel to my hand and I put the lapel against my knee. And I was like, oh shit, this releases the pressure. And then I started to first defending with the lapel and then I started to attack. And Keenan was already a big thing then and playing with the lapel and warm card and stuff like that. And I was thinking about, okay, what I'm going to do now because I want to play with the lapel and I, I refused to watch any Keenan's videos because that would you know, infect my, my mind. So I, I was learning, playing with the lapel maybe two years, only by myself, only fail and error. And then I started to watch the videos because I wanted to create my own style. Because if I would immediately start to watch other people's label videos, you yeah, know, right, I would be mean, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I started to just play, fail and error. And now I have my own kind of, uh, wait, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of like label guards, but I just like to use it for wrapping the head and defending and not like static positions. I like to just, Use it as a tool and wrap around the head and do kind of funky <laughs> stuff. Choke him out. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of my favorites are when we stand up and I, I take the cross, cross lapel and I just wrap it around the head and people are, what this guy is doing? You know? And again, action, reaction. Yeah. When I do this, I'm going to get reaction, whatever yeah. it is. So, Ooh. Yeah, we, we, we talked about it earlier. We've got, we've got a training partner who's similar style to you. Yeah. And, and no matter what position you're in with him, He's always up to something. Oh, yeah, he's so. always on your wrist or ah, ankle. I love, I love him already. <laughs> and, uh, no, he is really. He's he's honestly he's like when I was rolling with you, it, it really did remind. Um, when I tried passing your guard and you kind of caught my foot and it was yeah. like in that awkward, and then you started attacking my other foot. Yeah, I was like fuck, it's like yeah. fucking Steve, and I was like trying to get you over, but because he rolls like I, it kind of equipped me to yeah. not deal with it, but not panic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, it's okay. Put way over here, move over a little bit. Yeah, it's an interesting style because a lot of people talk about sort of position, submission, but, you know, that, that's kind of, you just break so many rules when you roll I, like that. I, I, I break all the rules. I break all the rules when I roll. And especially I talk shit all the time. People hate it. Something, <laughs> something but I, I make. And when I do John Wayne sweep, which is one of my favorites, first year when I did John Wayne sweep, always when I was able to hit the John Wayne sweep, I was whispering, John Wayne. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I, I love the shortcuts also because of course there's higher, like positional hierarchy, mm. passing everything. But for example, I'm, I'm passing from half guard. And if I can get my thumb in grip behind the neck, I go step over the choke immediately. I try to swing my leg over your head and finish the fight there. If, the, if it doesn't work, no worries. And then I try to pass. Yeah. And of course, we need to teach also that there is there is a reason why we go position to position, but uh, I think it's called nimble game that you kind of constantly attacking, and that's 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 what I do. And maybe my best attack is still on the baseball choke. I have been putting a lot of people to sleep with that one. So yeah. I saw, yeah 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 from bottom half guard, yeah. I go for the baseball grip. I let them pass. What with the power? With the grip? Yeah. With the gear? Yeah. 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 Thumb yeah. in like baseball grip, and then I just let them pass. Roll. Up. Yeah, you, might, you might have to show us that before we leave actually. yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's I have been <laughs> putting a lot of people to sleep with that and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's probably my, my best technique so if I can get those grips you're fucked you're yeah, fucked, okay. you're fucked. Yeah, and I let the guy to pass my god yeah. of course well, that's, it doesn't that's, work that's what it does though isn't it that's what you're that's, supposed to do I yeah. think that's kind of what happened to you in that competition wasn't it because I think you said it was an Ezekiel an Ezekiel is what but you said because you, was... you passed his guard so no I, I swept him was it yeah I swept him from bottom yeah and as I come over, he, he fucking had, I think it was that, yeah, it might yeah. Be baseball. I think it was, yeah. And yeah. I thought, mate, I couldn't fucking get out of it. I, couldn't, I, couldn't, yeah. I was posturing up, it's just making it worse. I was <laughs> yeah. like, fuck. And actually, that <laughs> you know? was my first video when I started my Instagram channel. I did a first technique video was baseball show two different ways. Mm. So there is this rolling way. So when the opponent pass on my right side and I kind of turn on belly down, mm. and then there is the other way. If I go like this, then I, I don't need to let them pass. Then I just turn myself 
against them and I can finish it. Yeah. That was that was my first video actually. Yeah, that's cool, <laughs> I man. To remember, but yeah. I, I will show it to you later. But yeah, hundred percent powerful stuff. And we can do the baseball choke with the lapel, or with the just color color grip. Yeah. Part. How do, how do you teach that style of jujitsu though? Because obviously, as a, as a white, blue, even purple belt in some cases, see fundamentals are really important. I, uh, I I don't I don't teach the way how I fight. Yeah. Okay. I, I, only like a. High level guys like purple belts and up. Then I started to, but with the beginners, I, I teach the basics. Yeah. I don't I don't teach them to do stuff what I do and yeah. wrong because otherwise, you, you create a stupid habits. So you need to have the when you have the building blocks when you have the like the foundation of the blueprint like all two two two, two attacks two defenses or from all the positions. Then we can start to move on. But I'm not teaching white belts to, you know, hop into the rolling kimura. No. No, no, no. Mm. When when you have the base game right and and you can do the, you know, ABC Jiu Jitsu, then then we can start to do yeah. do funky stuff. But always we need to always think about it. Like in Jiu Jitsu, our goal is always to get to the most dominant position if we can. So for example, if we are passing from the half guard and I see there's a clear route straight to the mount, don't go on side control. Go straight to the mount. Mm. Like always think about it. Like it's not so black and white. I need to go to side control. No, you don't. You can go straight to the mount if the possibility is there. Yeah. So. But of course, the idea is always like like I told you guys. Also, we were doing the class together uh, uh, two hours ago. So I was thinking action reaction. I want to make an action so I get a reaction. Yeah. So I want to do something that my opponent reacts. So I don't want to. My, I'm following my opponent. Whatever my opponent does, and then I'm a little bit late all the time, and I need to react what he does. I like to make the first move. So I kind of uh, then the ball is on me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I try to do the action reaction motion all the time so even though if I fight against somebody who is much better than me I try my stuff all the time I kind of force him to react somehow yeah okay and what, and what point where, where were you in your sort of belt journey when you started developing that style of jiu-jitsu purple belt purple belt purple belt yeah, yeah purple okay. belt. when I get my purple, purple belt then I started to play with the lapel and then I started to you know attack more co confidentially and, and, and then my base game was so good so if I need to you know but it's still with the good guys nowadays, I, I, I still, I, I do crazy stuff. I, I, do, I do all kinds of crazy stuff. But when I was purple, but then I started to, and it, I enjoyed so much. Jiu-Jitsu is much more fun when you, you know, try to attack and do all kinds of stuff. When I hit it, it's, it's amazing, but sometimes I look fucking stupid when I do something and I get, <laughs> <laughs> get caught out doing some kind of front throw and guy. And, and when, when, when I started to do the baseball choke, first, let's say seven months, Everybody was unbarring me because my arms were extended, mm -hmm. and everybody was like, "Oh, that's cute." But then I didn't stop, and then everybody was panicking because when I get the grips, it's it's a different ball game. <laughs> but it, it, it takes time. It takes time to kind of uh, be good at everything, every move. But don't don't quit. And I think it's a good thing that kind of de develop like one or two good attacks, what you are really good. And nowadays I don't use the baseball choke anymore so much, but I became really good at it. So always when I had the grips. People started to okay. They didn't know what to do. Do you find it's always there? Yeah, exactly. That, that exactly, technique exactly, is always exactly, there because exactly. even if you don't use it a lot, that's it. If you if you get it, it's that's fucking it. bang. But I was doing it like it. one year, almost only only thing. What I was trying to attack all the time, all the time, all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 all the time. But you need to do a lot of repetitions. Mm. And even with the, I, I remember I, I choked one black black belt. Hello, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Unconscious with a, with a baseball choke. And it, it was really nice because he's a super, super nice guy, Andrew. And, and after he wake up, he was like, did anybody see that? Did we get that on film? That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there was no ego at all. He was just excited. He was yeah. out like, Miko, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's sick, man. That's cool. So a lot of people will obviously know you from social media yeah so really big on instagram um facebook growing super fast as well yeah yeah yeah. and yeah. As, as we said earlier that's that's how we come across you um what was the inspiration for that uh my passion is to share my passion mm -hmm. and and i i was such, i was at this kind of uh, digital kind of a shadow before I, i've always been on facebook but i never write anything i'm just lurking what other people do but then i was thinking about if i want to share my passion only way is to go is the internet and the social media. That's the that's the only way. That's the only way. And then I started to do my Instagram and, and Facebook actually almost the same time, almost the same time like 2019, 19. Yeah. And now it's it's it, it has been growing pretty steadily. But last summer it really like blew up because I think my biggest video is the Power Kimura and it it hit like a. First three weeks, it was 7.1 million views. Yeah. First three weeks, 7 point million? Yeah, 7.1 7 million hell. views. Yeah. 
It's a dream, ain't it? Yeah. It's a fucking lot of views, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is. And then I Is that amazing. the one where you get the Kimura and then you yep. hug it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And because I remember, I remember when that. I was when I was thinking about what techniques do I film, and of course I'm checking out what, what other people are doing, like just because I'm a fan of Jiu Jitsu. And then I've never seen anybody, and actually this is all Euro move, this power Kimura. And I have never seen anybody do it with no gi. Mm. And I was doing I think I was the first, and now everybody calls it power Kimura. But uh, then when I did it, it was, and I, actually it was funny, I, I, I remember it was Saturday night when I posted it, I went to sleep, and I watched the video before I went to sleep, I said, this looks so fucking good. Like all the music, everything was, and I was like, I don't know, but I have a strange feeling. And when I wake up, I had 13,000 more followers. It has 300,000 views in a 10 hours. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it, was, it was amazing, yeah, 13,000 followers one, mm. one night. But, it, 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 but it, that's it, the thing, isn't it? Once you get that big one, yeah, and it's just all then, yeah, you know, you create that interest and in, exactly. In and because I did over. actually, I I love to do more videos where I explain and go. I started the Instagram like doing one minute videos because back in the day it was one minute was the limit. Yeah. So I did all of my videos one minute explanation, blah blah blah, and all the jokes and everything. Mm -hmm. So when the reels came up, I I felt like it was cheating. I do ten second video, but it's music in background. I was like. This is easy, <laughs> but yeah. uh, because I, I I love the explanation more. But now I do both. But the, the real other thing now, you know, because people are so these days, one minute is too long for them, yeah. and it, yeah. and and it's a different with a different platform. So let's say for example Instagram, 10, 15 seconds, nice music, that's the best. But in Facebook, there's a little bit older older guys and older girls, and they like a little bit more explanation. So for example, those one minute videos, Facebook. They, they, they love it. So in Facebook, if I do 10 second videos, they might also w go good. But overall, Instagram, really short videos. Facebook, a little bit longer. And YouTube, a little bit longer. So it's like pum, pum, pum. So what, from, from you going viral and, and doing really well on Instagram and, and Facebook, what opportunities does that bring about? I know we were talking offline about an opportunity you had recently. Uh, and uh, what's that, how does that change your life? In everything what I do. So basically because people started to see who I am, uh, and then I started to get messages that people want to fly to Spain to train with me. And actually, I, I got these uh, Serbian brothers, Ethem and Berry, came to train with me last summer for one week. One week, uh, and, and they came there to, basically they hired me for one week, and they paid me like a pretty good money. And after that, they hired me to be their coach in, in IMAF World Championship and MMA Championships in, in Abu Dhabi la last summer, and I was there coaching there. I was. <laughs> it, it was amazing and, and I was in a five-star hotel and in that time it was crazy because I was training this place called Cobra Fitness and that was where we were training for the competition yeah. and in the first training when I went there I was like oh it's so nice and cold here I have never before that trained any place where it was air conditioned <laughs> yeah. and the reason I was there was like are you serious I said, yes I am serious this is amazing and they were like wow <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, it gives me opportunities and, and of course because even though you get you know, famous on social media, that doesn't guarantee anything. But because I think I'm a really good uh, teacher, you know, so that gave me the opportunity to, you know, showcase my skills. And now people come to train with me and now the doors are open. There is, there is probably a lot of tremendous good coaches, but they never get the opportunity because nobody knows about them, mm. you know. So what's, um, what's the reception from your, your um, gym owners and things like that with you going viral? And do, do, do they care that you get bringing these people in? And oh. so, have there been any jealousy or any problems with stuff like that? No, not a jealousy. I, I don't know. But I also because when I'm famous, the gym is also famous. I, I tag that gym and, and, and I love my gym. But it's uh, of course there's always people who haters are always there. Yeah. But uh, I don't care about them because me and my channel and everything about me is so positivity. So I, I do everything with a smile and. and try to just keep positive vibes and if I get some haters or something like that I, I don't care I just block them immediately and that's it yeah. but but uh, you know Jim of course the gym has get also a lot of publicity because yeah. of because of that but but I love it because that's the place you know who made me so I of course want to yeah. you know promote the gym also and, and all of my training partners thank that's thank you for it, those yeah. guys because they truly made me and, and with all the support and that's why you if you can see my videos so I, I i do videos with every kind of i do with kids with uh, girls guys whoever because jiu jitsu is for everybody yeah. you know it's it's and i love to do videos to white belts black belts anybody anybody because it's it's for jiu jitsu is for everybody mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no. But yeah. Yeah. You, you had a particularly hard role with anyone in particular who's come in from somewhere? Like any pros, competitors, anyone like that? <laughs> <laughs> any just savages that's come in and you thought, fuck Yeah, me. many times. And of course, because now <laughs> people know who I am, so of course they go extra hard. And actually just uh, two weeks ago, I, I broke my rib with one guy. He was a super nice guy, but uh, I a little bit hurt my rib, rib but uh, not... And for me, it's... All rounds are the same. If we go hard, it's it's no problem for me. But actually, funny story because the Bellator fighter is Daniel James, American Predator. He sent me a message that he wants to come to train with me uh, in Spain, and I was googling the guy, and he's the one, of, he's the biggest heavyweights in the Bellator, like, <laughs> like a two meter, ten centimeters, and like 135 kilos. And I I was like. Oh man, nickname American Predator. <laughs> I was like, what am I gonna do with this guy? Message back, no thank you. Yeah, what am I gonna do? <laughs> Definitely not a berry ball, eh? <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna have a tough run with him. Hopefully he's gonna come, but uh, not, not particularly rounds, of course. And actually, one, one thing I can tell you uh, back in the day when I was white belt, when we were in Gaijin Academy Jiu Jitsu, there was this guy came in and he was a former Spetsnaz guy. So, Russian Special Forces, yeah. And he was like, I'm the man. I'm really the man. Uh, and he was a white belt. And he was fighting against one of the ladies in our gym. And the guy got the lady on the arm bar. And the lady was tapping. And the guy didn't, didn't let go. What a fucking asshole. Yeah. Fuck. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then I saw it. And I was like, I started yelling. I was a white belt. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Okay. And then my coach said, okay, you go with the guy. Okay, I'll go with the guy. Okay. And I didn't know how good he was. But I was, a, I think, two-stripe white belt. And I got him on an arm bar, I turned belly down. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I didn't, I, even though he was an asshole, I was not an asshole. But I got him in belly down arm bar, I started to pull, 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 no tapping. I said, I'm not going to fucking stop if you don't tap. I pull, 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 I, I hear noises, pum, 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 arm was breaking, everything was breaking. He didn't tap. Then the time went out, what the guy did, went to the locker room, take his stuff and never came back. Yeah. No fucking That way. was strange, that was strange. But again... Good lesson, good lesson. Because I was, I, and I was doing it slowly, even though I was angry for the guy, but I was doing it slowly. I was like, oh, yeah, because you never really want to hurt someone. No, no, no. You but know it was, what I mean? It, it, like, it but he deserves it. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to let it go if you don't tap. I, and I didn't, I didn't rip it. I was like, slowly, slowly. And that felt weird. I did it slowly. And I was like, tap, click, click, click. I was what the fuck? I think uh, Mikey Musamensi talked about that recently, didn't he? In his uh, one championship fight where he's like doing the Mikey lock on me. Yeah. And he's like breaking his knee. Yeah, I saw. I and he's saw. like slowly like breaking his yeah. knee. And he's thinking he's going to fucking yeah. tap. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he's yeah. just twisting him inside out. Yeah, and yeah, for, yeah. For, for, I think he had him for like seven minutes. Yeah. Mate, I, he's out for, they reckon he's going to be out for two years and he may not even fight again. I saw it. I saw it. it, it Did you see it? It, it was it's strange. Fuck. It was crazy to watch like this guy was, his knee was the other way. Yeah. And yeah. He's still yeah. not tapping. I'm looking at him like, <laughs> it's not worth it. No. Is it worth no, that? No. You know, he's still, he's still fucking lost. But that's, that, that's why I love chokes. There's no stuff yeah, there where yeah, it comes You go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, Kenny, that's happening. Yeah, but it is, it's so true. But you, I, I get it in competition. You yeah. know what I mean? If it's in like the world championships or something. So I don't even think I get it then. I don't, I don't think I would, I would, like what he'd done to his knee I wouldn't, in, his, in his leg. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do it. I just, yeah. I understand the mentality of some people that, mm. that will allow things to break yeah. to try and get the victory if it's, mm. if it's like massive for them but but in gyms I, I find yeah. it bizarre no, that's crazy oh, crazy course, isn't it? tap early tap all the time yeah. and stay healthy and that's maybe one of the most important things in jiu -jitsu. you know you cannot be like and if you feel like you're beaten and you know that it's there tap 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 tap, tap yeah it don't mean anything does it no no it, it don't mean it anything doesn't, it doesn't matter. and we can always reset and try to do better but tap fast tap often you know mm. <laughs> yeah so what else you got planned then so any any trips any travels coming up where are you going to be uh, let's see let's see if I, now i'm going to go finland for a while but definitely some something is up so i have invitations to go italy to have a seminar and a lot of other other places but uh, Let's see. Let's see. There's big news coming, but I cannot talk, talk about it yet. But I think it's going to be related to, with jujitsu and a lifestyle around it. So it's going to be a huge project. So that includes a lot of traveling for me. But now I'm going to go Finland and then I'm going to go back to Spain. And let's see, probably I'm going to go Berlin to meet the Ethem and Berry, the Serbian guys again. And I'm going to probably train with them next time. But I would love to also train by myself because now I notice that when I've been teaching so much, and sometimes I, I don't have the time to train by myself. And I'm still a brown belt, you know. I, I, I want to, you know, make myself also better. And sometimes it frustrates me if I'm, you know, only teaching and I cannot train by myself. Because when I'm teaching, my, my students are my priority. 
you know, I want to just be a student also by myself. So I maybe need to put a little bit more time, you know. Actually on the mats. And, yeah, except and volume down a little bit the privates and just focusing on my own training because I love to be also like just training like everybody else. Now I've been yeah. teaching so much. So it's like a, I feel a little bit frustrated because I cannot train as much as I wanted. So maybe I'm going to do, let's say, six months of training for myself. So I dedicate like I'm going to do at least one training for myself. And if I have time and energy, then I do the privates. Mm -hmm. So a lot of traveling is going to come come up in the near future. So yeah. And, and do, you, do you enjoy and appreciate the, the amount of recognition that you've now got? Because I think for me, sometimes it's just nice to be anonymous. So if you go to a gym, you just another brown belt or a purple belt in the yeah. training, but you're getting to a point now where there's, you know, anywhere with an internet connection, people are probably going to recognize you. Yeah, everybody recognizes. So how do well, you find that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, for me, it's okay. And, but that's not the point why I'm doing this. The point was, I, I just want to share my passion. I just want to share the, you know, positive message through jujitsu. But it's a, it's a byproduct of becoming famous, everybody knows you. But because my brand and I am like this, I'm positive and blah, blah, blah. So everybody is like, uh, everybody when they see me, they're like, eh, eh. <laughs> okay, eh, eh. <laughs> So it's, it's kind of funny. And I don't know if I enjoy it. Well, actually I, I do. And I have always time for people who follow me. And for example, if somebody wants to take photo or they come to Malaga and can I meet you fast? Always, 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 always. And usually I even give them a round or two on, just because if you have, if you, if you like me and if you are a fan of me and, and you come to meet me, I always have time for you. And that's why I try to answer actually every message also on the internet because if you are from Cameroon and you send me a message like, Vico, I love your techniques. Thank you. Thank you for your support and hopefully we can roll one day together. You know, I, 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 I love it. And because everybody kind of uh, who likes me, they, they are like, hey, hey, this is energy. <laughs> so, so. so you talk about that energy that you've got. Yeah. Is there, obviously with um, jiu-jitsu, it's obviously really good for your like, mental health. Yeah. Has there only been like, any low times where jiu-jitsu helped get you through stuff or anything many like times, that? Many times, because... I'm also a human, so sometimes I have been getting like depressed and stuff like that. But if I just train, because the most depressed I, I, I want to be when I don't train. So if I'm not training in a few weeks, it, it starts to, I start start to, to kind of it. melt down a little bit. But yeah, Jiu Jitsu is, uh, is perfect for my mental health because, uh, you know. Yeah. It, 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 why, why, why do you think that is? Because we are, we are so close to each other. We are in uncomfort zone all the time. You know, we are hugging each other. We are doing something that is... In, in score, it's uncomfortable, you know, be super close to the other people and you have sweat and a fucking ball hairs in your <laughs> mouth and all kind of stuff. But, but, <laughs> yeah, fucking true though, what, it? <laughs> what you do, Trey? <laughs> <laughs> no gear, I do. You don't train no gear with the, with, with the clothes on, no? It's <laughs> <laughs> a naked jujitsu, jitsu yeah, well. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but just, uh, I think that's the reason because we are so close and it's so uncomfortable kind of way and, and the hugging and it's it, I think it's even some kind of science behind it so if you're basically hugging it, each other it releases some kind of uh, feeling good hormones and stuff like that so Ox oxytocin ah there it is <laughs> <laughs> um, outside of jiu-jitsu yeah. um, you know who are you outside of jiu-jitsu you've obviously got one or two tattoos yeah um, and you're I think you're either your Instagram or your Facebook one of them says that jiu-jitsu slash tattoo addict yeah so talk to us about the tattoos. So do they have any meaning to you? Like where did that start? Have you always had the tattoos? Yeah, and actually my first tattoo is this. I took it in 1995. <laughs> uh, of course, I was a badass tiger is coming there. But <laughs> tattoos for me, they are, they are the way to express myself. And I don't take myself too serious. Mm -hmm. So some of the tattoos have rough meaning. For example, this is kind of my fallen angel. But then I have like a Escobar here. And, <laughs> Escobar. and this is... Tired Bugs Bunny, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's tired, tired yeah, yes. Yeah. And there is Duck who is robbing a bank, and, yeah. and then there is a Homer Simpson on my other leg, and like a, because I love the way I'm expressing myself through these pictures, mm -hmm. and I, I, I just love tattoos. I just love it. And you have also oh, tattoos. Oh, I'm covered. And bro. you have a b back piece, man. Yeah, my, yeah. My back is still blank. Is it? Yeah, I don't know what. It fucking hurts, mate. Oh, thank <laughs> you. And I have only like a, not so nice places. And I, actually, last week I took the knee knee tattoo. Oh. <sighs> Oh man! I just had this coloured in. Oh yeah. yeah, that's going all the way up because I had shit. I had young yeah. shit tattoos, and I'm just trying to sort them out. But fucking hell! Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great way to kind of do something for yourself. It's like a Christmas. Always when you have new tattoo, it's like a, I don't know. I get super excited because it's for me, 
And if somebody doesn't like my tattoos, I don't give a fuck. They are for me and they are, you know, they, they power me and I want to express myself. Yeah, my, um, my tattooist, he, uh, when, he, when, I heard, when he heard that I was coming to yeah. meet you, he was like, oh yeah, fucking, if it is in Plymouth, I'll tattoo him. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm always ready for a new, new ink, but uh, that's a great way to kind of express, your, express yourself and... and yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm like a big fucking kid, mate. I'm, my, my back's full of Marvel and DC characters. Because <laughs> nice. like I owned a game shop for 15 years or whatever, so oh. I was like, uh. cool. What is the next tattoo? <laughs> you have all of your planning. So I'm gonna finish this, and then I'm gonna get white line work over the top of it. So ah, you're gonna like go that. white over the yeah, there. white over the top of it. That's gonna look cool. And then I'll start my legs, I think, because then my top half is pretty much done. I don't think I'm not sure about the neck and stuff yet. Don't know. Probably will one day. Maybe, maybe the back of the head more. And it was weird when I actually, I, I, when I tattooed my fingers, this one was the first, it says stay true here, like bum. And when I didn't have anything else on my fingers, when I was like, oh shit. Because when you can see your yeah. hands all the time. First yeah. I was like, oh man, it was weird, it was super <laughs> weird. And then I was like, oh, here, here, here. So then yeah. it started to go. But I, I'm, I, I'm out of control. I might even, if it comes to mind, I, I can tattoo my head, I don't care. So yeah. actually I have side of yeah. my head and all kinds. What was it like getting that tattoo? That it's, it, 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 it was not so bad. Mm, yeah. Drilling Strange, your head, like a, yeah. yeah. A little bit drilling on the head, but it, it was not so bad. Do you use numbing cream? I have done it yeah. twice, but uh, for me, I don't know. It works for maybe one hour and after that. Yeah, so I, I use this one brand now that lasts for about two hours. Oh. So now I only do a two hour sitting. <laughs> 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 two hours done. And that's also a good question because... Uh, I have been talking about this uh, a lot with the other guys who has tattoos because I think it's okay to use numbing cream if you also are familiar with the pain. Because if you take all of your tattoos with numbing cream, I, I don't know, it feels like a... Yeah, I, I only I, started I, on my, after my back. Yeah. So I'd, I'd done eight hours on my back in one sitting. Yeah. And after I was like, fuck it. I don't even think, I was at the time I come home and I was like, said to my wife, I was like, I don't even think I'm going to get finished. Yeah. Still had another day yeah. set to finish it. And yeah. I was like, I... I felt like I was fucking tortured. Yeah. It, it, so then I went back and got it done with no numbing cream. And then when I moved around to my chest, yes. yeah. I was like, this point on some fucking numbing yeah. cream. But again, like you said, yeah, I kind yeah. of earned my stripes. I had like two sleeves. E exa back exactly. Done, exactly. You know, because I do you know what is I think I just had enough of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and because some point, for example, I have my chest the eagle here. Yeah. It was infernal, the pain. It was like, I was, I was like, I was like, it was so like yeah. my head was about to explode. in the stern. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah, yeah it's it is. horrible It was like, a, like I still have fucking nightmares about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. I was like on my spine. I, that's, that's the one that got me. Oh, it's like man. going down my spine. I like, could hear him just... <laughs> and I was like... Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> but if you use numbing cream, have at least like normal tattoos before so you know the pain. But of course, the, I don't know... But is it even possible to have a lot of tattoos and do everything with the cream? I don't think so. No, because, uh, the thing is as well is if it, like I'll find that one cream that does like two hours, but I've used a cream that lasted maybe like 45 minutes. Yeah. And then afterwards, the pain is fucking 10 times worse. Yeah. So if it, I had like a four hour sitting at the time, I'd yeah. put on the numbing cream and yeah. it wore off after maybe 45 yeah. minutes, an hour. And then I'm three hours in fucking agony because yeah. it's even worse because yeah. it just... It just all flares up. Yeah. It goes all and shit. Then like, it? First four or five minutes, and then you're waiting <laughs> when it starts to fade out. When it starts to fade out, so I don't know. It is funny. Yeah. Well, I don't know fucking why we put ourselves for it, really. But yeah. <laughs> what is this? Uh, what does this say on your head? Stay true. Stay true. Stay, stay true. true. Yeah. Stay okay. true. I, I'm really believing that. Stay true because I try to stay true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And after I, I did this stay true tattoos after I made the decision when I changed myself. Yeah. You know. When I was in a, in, in a other side of the law, I didn't have these tattoos. When I became a AKA, like a different guy, mm. then I tattooed stay true. Yeah. But, but, have you have you travelled anywhere? Because I, I think you know maybe Scandinavia. I think a lot of European countries are, are fairly kind of just relaxed about tattoos, and it's certainly more and more common now to mm. see like face tattoos and hand tattoos. But have you travelled anywhere? Maybe like in the Middle Eastern countries where they react in a negative way I, I, I'm guessing you don't give a shit but yeah. just, just, I'm just curious I, I, I don't but actually the funny thing is uh, last summer when I was t when I was uh, teaching uh, the Serbia, Serbian guys in IMAF World Championship in Abu Dhabi and there the tattoos are still you know and, and I have face tattoos and every, everything and, and, and my, my clients uh, his friend is, is really high government guy in Arab Emirates 
and I met the guy and I see he, he was like looking a little, little bit like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but nowadays it's pretty acceptable already. yeah yeah I think it's moving on I, th- yeah. I think you still get judged a little bit at times yeah. like yes, but I don't give a fuck anymore, yeah you know yeah. and it's still oh, strange yeah. when you go some some shop or grocery store somebody still you know watching and I'm like if I fucking look like this dude think that I'm gonna steal because like <laughs> yeah. I'm under the fucking radar so <laughs> everybody can see it so yeah but it doesn't it doesn't matter I don't I have a good tattoo and, but, and that's also I feel suspicious if there is a guy who has heavily tattooed but every tattoo is like a on the spot like beautifully tattoos yeah, it's something suspicious yeah. because when you have like good tattoos bad tattoos they it's, it's may a, I fucking got a mosh of bad ones I know I'm <laughs> fucking hell I'll tell you I've been sad like this most of the most of the thing is awful and you get a tattoo in, 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 bottom of your foot no? yeah yeah, yeah. what the fuck is this tell me what, it, did, what is that idea <laughs> I, I was 18 yeah. and uh, where, 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 we, where we're from yeah. there was a, there was an old tattooist he was like used to do a lot of the navy guys yeah and there was this rumor that if you had a if you had the Lord's Prayer tattooed on the bottom of your foot, yeah. they'd give you tattoos free for life. Oh. And the reason was is because apparently it was so painful oh. and no one could have it done. And my uh, my friend's dad was an amateur tattooist. I was eighteen, ego. Someone said I couldn't get it done, so I got it done. But of course, at the time, I didn't even know what fucking jujitsu was. So I was like, just stick anything on my foot. No one's ever going to see it. Uh, what, what is it? What like, is it? Get out, pop it out. Some kind of fucking lizard, no. It's like a weird, like... <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Is that dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be a bit of tribal. But, oh, okay. But now it looks like a dolphin. Yeah, it does look like a dolphin, yeah. doesn't it? But, but I wouldn't think about it, it would wear off. It's just yeah, pretty yeah. Good. it's still pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it was... It, but I, I, it was only a small tattoo, but it took about an hour. Yeah. I was laid on the floor. Um, the tattooist was, was set up and I had to push my foot my leg forward and he was because oh, 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 just can get it through but where, where, the, where, where the sort of pads are that you walk on yeah. that came straight out but the, the bit in the arch that stayed in pretty well <laughs> but I thought a while ago I thought a while ago about getting I don't know like a Brazilian flag or something tattooed over the top but I was oh, like, God, yeah, yeah, yeah go for it yeah, yeah. And I, let, let me see like video for you you sick motherfucker yeah. Yeah. I'm excited yeah, like, yeah. I'm excited about your pain yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the hardest thing was just not flinching oh. really it, it wasn't it wasn't oh, painful it was ticklish and it was just the no, I was no one can touch my bottom of my feet. Yeah, I'm mate. Fucking, oh, oh yeah, I'm fucking so ticklish with the bottom yeah, of my feet. Yeah. And never. top of the foot is also this one, unbelievable, oh, unbelievable. Yeah, and actually, when I took this one, I was so excited that after the tattoo, I went home. I was two hours home, and I was like, I'm gonna go have a few beers, okay? <laughs> and I put a little bit of plastic on top of it, sock, uh, and just a uh, you know you know tennis shoe. And then I went out. I was out uh, drinking beer and watching football with the British lads. And then I went home, and I was like. I take it off and I, Miko, now you made a fucking mistake. It was like, it was bad. And then I was, then I was without shoes like a two weeks and then it yeah. hit properly. But yeah. it's, it's painful. I've, this year has been the worst. The, the blacking out is, is terrible, especially recovery. I remember when it went on around my elbow. Yeah. So I, I don't want around my elbow and I went cinema straight after. So I'm like, got in the car, I come out, unwrapped it to like the air get out. Yeah. And Karis went, what the fuck? is wrong with your elbow and I went yeah. what do you mean and I'm not joking I was like elephant man it come out like, so swollen like straight away yeah. and I was like see how that goes in the cinema and I'm like I'm in the cinema and it's just like boom 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 oh yeah you normally feel like, bum, bum, bum. yeah it's the first time though I've had like that intense you know what I mean it felt like I'd like fucking fractured my elbow mm. if that makes sense it was that strong and I was like and I'm still like it's not done it properly so I've got to go in for a second bout with that yeah. <laughs> and actually for you luckily you're leaving England but if you would be, for example, in Spain, where it's always like the sun is hot, oh, yeah, you're yeah. fucking boiling your hand. Yeah, so, that'd be so horrible, yeah. Only 50 sun cream all the time. <laughs> yeah. and probably yeah. not enough. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe when well, you're right. I'll get the white on it, mate. It'll, yeah, it'll balance out. Spain, we let, let's put it all white. Yeah, so I'll come <laughs> over and you'll be like, yeah, don't forget your sun cream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your favorite tattoo? I think it's this one. Yeah. It's kind of my fallen angel, I think. And, and you see, the colors are pretty nice still, and it's made 15 years ago. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it, it's pretty nice. I think that's, that's my favorite. That's most meaningful. Yeah, okay. And uh, it, it might be the same answer, but who's the best artist that you've, you've has worked on you? Ooh, I, have, I have a lot, a lot of different artists, but I think my... So I like your handwork. <laughs> your handwork looks really good. Yeah. These, these are made for... Uh, my hands are made uh, by Cello, Micello, Cello Tattoos. But now this 
for example, this tiger, this I made by Ariel Di Sabato, and, and I, I do most of my tattoos now with Ariel. So okay. he's that's a that old school amazing. style, isn't it? Yeah, he's that's a really super cool. nice, nice tattooist, and, and you know everything is great. For example, this one, you can see everything is you know super, and he has done basically all of my legs and everything. And I remember when I when I took my first tattoo with Ariel, because before I didn't have the money to have like a, like good tattoos. I was so excited first time I had it like. I was able to pay the full price and I was like, this looks amazing. <laughs> like I was like maybe three years ago, first time in my life I had the money to, you know, have a proper tattoo, like really good guy. And it's not in cheap to, you know, hire for all day. But I was so excited. This looks so nice. <laughs> but yeah, Michelo and Cello and, and Ariel, but Yeah, and they're based in Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ari, Ariel lives actually pretty close to me, so the tattoo studio is maybe three kilometers from our house. And I, and actually we are doing project with Aria together because we're gonna we're gonna launch actually Manto is gonna launch my signature kimono soon so yeah. I, it's it's based on my tattoos so it's gonna be white kimono and it's gonna be only like a stitching not a patches yeah. and then it's gonna be all kind of a similar to my tattoos on the kimono so it's, it's gonna be amazing and hopefully we can launch it in a few months maybe so it, it's gonna be cool you've got you've got some rash guards as well I think haven't you yeah 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 I have the 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 little, the green and, and yellow rash guards and that's also designed by me so it, it was it's, it's it's pretty cool to see rash guards all around the world and, and actually this really big uh, 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 sports retailer called decathlon and and in France I think it's the biggest sports retail shop in Spain but anyway I was googling something and I found out they was in, the, in France Decathlon was selling my shirts. And I was like, <laughs> Miko, this is unbelievable. So, yeah, that's fucking crazy. But I love... Uh, what I, was I, it like um, doing your BJJ Fanatic stuff? Like, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I really want to know about that. Because that's yeah, really so cool. So I, I did the first project. The uh, f- first one was the Leopard Jokes from Everywhere. Uh, that was my first BJJ Fanatics instructor. And, it, and it, I, I did it like a one and a half year ago about. And it's How still, does that come about? Did you contact them? Did they contact you? Is it actually, like I a, did already before that one instructional, which was be a, a, a BJJ for beginners. And I launched it by myself in Vimeo. Okay. Okay. And I was proud about when I launched that one. <laughs> and then actually my coach told me like, you should send a BJJ Fanatics a message that you want to do a video with them. And then I sent them a message and I had maybe 40,000 followers already then. And they were like, yes, let, 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 let's, let's do it. Really? And then we did the label chalks from everywhere. And it's still, you know, selling pretty nicely. And, and that's one of my main incomes at the, Is at the time. Yeah. That's amazing. And now I've been launching two. So label chalks from everywhere. And now I launched us like a three months ago, no gi chalks from everywhere. <laughs> and I think <laughs> nice. I'm going to do like a gi, no gi, gi, no gi. And my next project maybe is going to be again with the gi and I was thinking about uh, uh, using lapel so like attacking and surviving bad positions and, and we use the lapel yeah. to defend and do kind of yeah that would be cool that'll yeah and be then cool, yeah. I go, go back to no gi I think I'm going to go gi no gi gi no gi and let's see let's yeah see. Man, they're cool yeah you should definitely check them out yeah yeah yeah, 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 100%, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then the lapel chokes from everywhere it's selling really nicely and I'm poof, I'm of course proud of course but also surprised uh, I was like and people love it I'm, every day I get some messages ah, I bought the DVD and it's DVD yeah. it's structural <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it, it was it was great and I, I love the process I, I love the process it's fun yeah, it's, it's true it's fun can you imagine label show from everywhere I get to choke my, my fucking UKs for many hours in a row so <laughs> that, that was amazing but it was really much easier the second project first project we were filming like a six days like and then we need to go back and bump bump bump, bump. No. where'd you do it to at your place or? yeah 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 in yeah. Lillus Barnes Martial Arts mm-hmm. yeah. but the no kid shocks from everywhere was we filmed like three months ago we did it in two days because I was planning everything so bump 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 and with my UKs Sergio and Vincent so, so we two days before filming we went to the gym I said okay here's all the techniques let's try them a few times so we are nice and smooth and then actually one day we filmed 95% of all the techniques and then we just came polishing a little bit so it was it was not that that bad, you know. But I, I'm already planning the next one, so. But it's definitely gonna be with the gi again. Yeah. So. Would so. you prefer gi or no gi? I love both. I used to love no gi more because I, I used to be a wrestler, but now I, I like both. I like both equally. So I, I don't have any. Maybe I don't know. No gi is sometimes maybe more fun. It's like pump, 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 pump. But but then also the gi, all the grips, all the details. I love that also. So. First, maybe five or six years, I trained pretty much 
So I was doing no gi, gi, no gi, gi. I, I started like doing since the beginning, like both, pam, 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 pam. And now, of course, sometimes, for example, when I was doing the nogi, nogi instruction, I did a lot more training in nogi before that. So I was like in the in the morning, and especially when I did the label chokes, I was maybe five, six months before that, I was doing, you know, I was rolling and doing those chokes. So I had like a nice confidence and, and, and this kind of a nice touch to the gi. Yeah, some people have a real, a real preference with that stuff and they I, I trained for two years no gi yeah so I, I did the uh, sort of old school MMA classes yeah. where we did a bit of jujitsu and then I put a gi on for the first time after two years and drove me mad for, for about a year or Frustrate, two eh? yeah just people would grab audio and I, could, I couldn't break grips or anything of yeah. course I was, I was brand new to the gi um, but yeah once you get used to it I think it's good yeah what's your preference oh you know what my fucking preference is <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate the gi but oh. I am um, I'm trying I think, I think that's what I'd say like I'm I'm, and you're I'm trying to to love it if yeah and, and you're fairly fresh said, yeah. you're, you're gonna start to love it also because now it's frustrating but if you don't do it now you're gonna fucking regret it so, yeah. so just I, I do I, I do do it 50-50 anyway yeah. so I don't I don't not do it because it's in gear like today for example yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll still do it I'll still do everything it's just my preference is yeah, yeah. is definitely no gear okay. but I guess that's just attributes maybe I, I, don't, I don't feel I don't what do you guys think about it because now there is a lot of like a I don't, I don't think it's a schisma but in the internet like no gi gi no gi gi like uh, what the fucking why do you use this pyjamas or like <laughs> this kind of a head body with, I, I don't get I don't it know, no, no, no. for me it's just, just love of the art we are all I was about family. to say that my overwhelming thing though is I'm still doing jiu-jitsu so I don't give yeah, a fuck yeah exactly do you know exactly. what I mean like exactly. I still whether yeah. I'm putting a gi on yeah. or not yeah. if, if you give me the choice I'd say no gi yeah. but if I'm still putting a gi on I don't give a fuck yeah, I'm still, exactly. still training exactly yeah. so it never puts me off training yeah. and I think what frustrates me more is just that someone who's really good in the gi, mm. it it shows. Mm. That makes sense. Like my fundamentals for me just being a white belt, movement, mm. posture, blah 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 blah. In the in, with no gi, I can sometimes it can be a bit of a leveler for me mm. with you know just like that. But if someone's got if someone's really good with the gi, <laughs> fuck me, like I can't even get near them. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think that's where I'm like, oh fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not in a bad way, but like it's. But again, I guess as I go through and get better. And yeah, and it's like, also uh, really important to do both because, for example, let's say I have another rib injury. So for me, if I would do no gi, that would be super risky because it's slippery, it's fast. So gi, I can a little bit hold down and I can kind of control it more. So sometimes it's you know in that yeah, way also yeah. it's. it's important and of course the labels and stuff and there's so much details but I, I love both both e equally so I don't think there's anything cooler than a, a cool loop choke or a yeah. cool gi choke you know yeah, what I mean yeah, if yeah. someone gets you with something I'm like fuck's sake yeah, that's flying arm by still look nice mate <laughs> 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 not that I'll be yeah, trying many times saying, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and if you fail it it's, 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 it's cool it's look cool yeah, 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 yeah. land on your yeah. fucking head yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah mate um Appreciate you coming on and talking to us, mate. My pleasure, guys. Um, My it, pleasure. It's been really cool. Is there anything that you wanna wanna sort of finish up with? Any any anything you wanna tell people about in regard to advice, jujitsu, stuff you're doing, where to find you? Uh, sure. So, for example, thank for my training partners, Lilius Baranata, and thank you for everybody for who's supporting me. And I love my teammates, and I love this whole jujitsu family. And and it was my pleasure, guys. And and go buy my instructionals and support <laughs> the madness. And and if you are ever in Malaga, send me a message and. I'm more than happy to meet and, and, and train and, and just keep smiling and fail an error. Jiu-Jitsu never dies, baby. Yeah, appreciate you coming <laughs> on. Thank man. you, brothers. Thank you. Thank you.